Hi, I'm Jesse Smith. I'm a tech lead on the simulation team at Aurora, and today I'll be walking through our approach to simulation at Aurora. The reason simulation is so important to Aurora is because we believe it is the best way to fully understand how the Aurora driver is progressing. Consider the number and variety of experiences that a vehicle can have on the road. It's vast. If you want to understand the implications of a single change in the Aurora driver's code over all these experiences, you would need, we estimate, a 100 vehicle fleet operating 10 hours a day, every day for 50 years. And we change our code on our main branch more than 200 times a day. At Aurora, every code change is run through a huge number of offline tests, including simulations and perception scenarios that recreate all the experiences that are most relevant to that change giving us fast feedback on uh, how that change modifies performance. Around 5 million simulations are run at Aurora every day. Naturally, this requires incredibly powerful and reliable cloud computing infrastructure. Aurora's cloud infra enables developers without backgrounds in high performance computing or distributed systems to dynamically scale simulation workloads across thousands of compute nodes. So the number of simulations we run is accelerating, see the curve, as we build more scenarios and hire more engineers, commissioning more sims. We have run over a billion simulations in the last two years, and over the life of Aurora, we calculate that at least 6 billion miles of driving would have been required to expose the Aurora driver to the same number of experiences that we have given it in sim. We also need our software stack to be architected in a robust way that supports repeatable behavior in simulation. Our simulation tools are deeply integrated with the Aurora driver software stack that runs on the vehicle. If you think of the Aurora driver as approximately broken up into the subcomponents you've learned about today, sensors, perception, planning, maps, then in simulation, we run these same software modules unmodified. We can choose to test them all end to end or take certain modules out and replace them with a synthesized version, helping us to test, for example, motion planning in isolation. Some of our more common SIM configurations are shown here. This flexible architecture allows us to use our simulator to test and train the motion planning system, test and train the perception system, prototype and configure our sensor hardware, and test our maps. To give you a flavor of what this looks like, we are going to dive deeper into one specific configuration where we simulate the sensors and help evaluate the perception system. To reliably test and train the Aurora driver's perception system in simulation, we must be able to model the sensor inputs, LiDAR, radar, and camera with very high fidelity. This is an example of Aurora's in-house sensor simulation engine in action. All of this footage was created by our sensor simulation software. What you see is the same kind of simulated camera images that the Aurora driver would see. When it comes to machine learning systems, they will pick up on all sorts of details. So we need to be very careful in constructing our virtual world to be a convincing stand-in for the real one. Notice the way the wheels spin and show true smooth motion blur. The same goes for the road surface as we cruise by. These are important details for our perception system. A blurry road surface appears very different to a machine learning system than a static one. Also, note the reflections on the sides of the vehicles. These are true reflections, not faked as you might see in other AV simulators. Reflected sensor returns, so-called multipath, are an important feature of real world operation we recreate in a physically correct way. When we pass a truck on the side of the road, which we'll come back to in a few slides, the driver is rendered realistically. It is difficult to capture human motion well, just consider the uncanny valley. And we don't want to test and train our driver with humans that only move like 70s sci-fi robots because that's simply not realistic and the Aurora driver might learn incorrect behaviors because of it. Our vehicles perceive the world through cameras, LiDAR, and radar. So our simulations of each sensor modality must be physically realistic in order for the simulated experiences to translate to the real world. Let's take a look at simulations of each of the modalities in turn. Our LiDAR simulator factors in the true beam shape of each laser firing. We can handle complex effects, such as when a beam only partially covers an object, or when half a beam hits shiny car paint and the other half hits the dark rubber of a tire. Simulating radar is very difficult because of the way that radar waves behave. So quite often radar simulators just return arbitrary points on other vehicles and ignore the rest of the environment entirely. At Aurora, our simulated radar sensors actually work the same way real radars do. They construct data cubes based on reflected radar signal and accurately capture the characteristics such as angular resolution and antenna gain patterns. 
on the camera side, our simulator factors in the true spectral nature of light and uses state-of-the-art path tracing and Monte Carlo integration to compute each image and produce extremely realistic renderings. Finally, our first light simulator developed together with our in-house hardware team is so accurate that we use it to evaluate new hardware designs before manufacturing real prototypes. Next, we will look at how we use our realistic sensor simulation to complement and expand the data we capture during on-road testing. You've probably encountered something like this while driving, a stopped car on the side of the road. This is a situation where long-range sensing is crucial for autonomous trucking. We need to recognize and act on these situations much earlier than a passenger car would need to. Every time we encounter an event like this in real-world driving, we capture it and turn it into a simulation, but not just one. We expand it into a larger set of programmatically created scenarios that are variations on the original event. In the video, we first see the on-road event that we're interested in. Then we see a side-by-side -side view of the automatically reconstructed simulation. And note that what we're interested in here is the event itself, not reproducing things like whether there are bushes on the side of the road or not. Finally, we see four variants of the same scenario, not just showing a truck parked on the shoulder, but also a passenger car, a box truck, and an SUV. And this is where the scale of simulation testing comes into play. We can generate as many permutations of this as we need to. Finally, the sensor simulations also become forever tests. While the data we have of the on-road event may become outdated if we update our sensors, this synthetic test can evolve with our sensor suite upgrades, saving us from having to redo all of the work when evaluating new sensor configurations. Having created the simulated data, it's obviously important to confirm that the machine learning based perception system processes these simulated data in the same way that it does real data. This is what really drives the requirement for high fidelity sim. Other AV simulators with lower fidelity will struggle with the reality gap. In this video, we see that our perception systems are able to consistently detect and track the truck on the side of the road from far out until the point where we pass it and drive on. If that truck were inaccurate in some way, if perhaps its material properties were unrealistic. It's likely in our experience that a machine learning model would not be able to recognize it because it doesn't resemble a real truck. But thanks to the realistic virtual worlds that we build and the physically accurate simulation that we perform, our tests can be representative of a real world scenario. Now, beyond just testing our perception system using simulated data, we are also using our simulators to train our perception system. In this video, we see a couple of instances of what we call foreign objects and debris. These are things in the roadway that aren't road actors, but that the Aurora driver nonetheless needs to be aware of and react to. In this case, there's a limit to how much data we can expect to gather from just on-road driving. While tire shreds and sofas do show up more often than one would hope, there is an endless variety of the objects that might show up in the road in pretty much any pose. Therefore, we can make our perception system more robust to these objects by generating endless variety in simulation and training on these synthetic data. In recent experiments, we have managed to increase the recall of our remainder explainer, the module that tracks these types of objects, by around 30%, while holding extremely high precision constant by including large sets of these types of synthetic data as seen in the video. Mature, high-fidelity simulation running at scale allows us to test and train our ML-based perception and motion planning systems reliably. It is equivalent to having a fleet of 50,000 trucks that can be deployed instantly at the touch of a button. This has many benefits, but more than anything else, it allows us to move much faster. For example, the sensor suites on the trucks outside were developed and iterated on in the lab and in simulation. Then we built almost 20,000 truck simulation scenarios before we had even completed the first real world prototype. So the Aurora driver was developed against these scenarios and was ready for real world testing on the first truck as soon as it was road ready. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for joining me to learn about simulation at Aurora.